Okay, starting 8.2, we are going to talk specifically about, <clears throat> excuse me, parallelograms in this unit or in this section. Um, so a parallelogram is a quadrilateral with both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So typically this is the figure, the way that we think of it, how it looks um, when we talk about a parallelogram. But a rectangle by definition is also a parallelogram and a square by definition is also a um, parallelogram. So all rectangles and squares are parallelograms. Not all parallelograms are rectangles and squares um, because a parallelogram does not have to have 90 degree angles, nor does it have to have equal sides. It just has to have opposite sides parallel. Um, theorem 8.3, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its opposite sides have to be congruent. So meaning the top and the bottom would be congruent to one another and the side and the side would be congruent. Um, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then opposite angles are congruent. So these are equal to each other and these are equal. Also, what I was just going to say is the next one. Theorem um, 8.5, um, if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its consecutive angles are supplementary. So that means my X and Y angles would add to 180. So like these would add to 180. These would add to 180. These would add to 180. And these would add to 180. And remember, we have 360 degrees total in a quadrilateral. If a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, then its diagonals bisect each other. So they cr cross, but when they cross, they cut them in half. Now, one thing that's very important on this is that they bisect each other. It doesn't mean that all four pieces then are congruent in length. If you notice, this diagonal is longer than this diagonal. So when I cut it in half, these two pieces are congruent to one another, but they are shorter than these two pieces. Now, the only time when they will be equal length will be when it's a square or rectangle. Then they will be equal in length and all those pieces will be the same. Um, find, the var or find the value of each variable in the parallelogram. Go ahead and pause me. I think you guys can do these on your own to start with. Unpause me when you're done. Okay, so remember, this guy is congruent to this guy. So I'm going to do 9b minus 2 equals 106. I'm going to add 2 to both sides, so 9b equals 108. I'm going to divide by 9 on both sides, so I get 108 divided by 9, and I get b is equal to 12. So we also know that these two angles are supplementary. So I know that 106 plus 7a minus 3 is equal to 180. Um, so 106 minus 3 is 103. To move it to the other side, I'm going to subtract it. So I'm going to do 180 minus 103. And I get 7a equals 77. Divide by 7, so I get a equals 11. All right, next one. These two sides, since it's a parallelogram, are congruent. So I'm going to do 7c minus 13 is equal to 4c plus 5. I'm going to subtract 4c to get 3c. But at the same time, I'm going to add 13 to get 18. Divide by 3, and I get C equals 6. Now, I know that these two angles right here are congruent. So 10D minus 27 is equal to 6D plus 9. Subtract 60 from both sides, so I get 4D. Add 27 to both sides, and I get 36. I'm going to divide by 4 on both sides, and I get D equals 9. All right, this one, these two sides are congruent to one another. So 5e plus 14 equals 12e minus 42. I'm going to add 42 to both sides, so I get 56. And I'm going to subtract 5e from both sides, and I get 7e. Divide by 7 on both sides, and I get e equals 8. And then I'm going to do top and bottom. 2t plus 25 equals 8t plus 7. Subtract 2t from both sides, I get 6t. Subtract 7 from both sides, and I get 18. Divide by 6, divide by 6, and I get t equals 3. Hopefully all my math was okay there. Okay, and those just went off of these theorems that we just talked about. All right, next page. Um, go ahead and solve these. Pause me and solve these on your own. Unpause me when you're done. Um, we're going to do things that we did similar on the other side. So for instance, I know that this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to this. However, if I set this equal to this, I would have a V and a T, so I can't do that. 
what I'm first going to do is I'm going to set this equal to this, knowing that t is equal to um, t. I'm going to find t and plug it in for this t. So I do 8t minus 30 equals 4t plus 6. Subtract 4t and I get 4t. Add 30 and I get 36, so t equals 9. I am then going to plug that in here to find the length of this little piece. So 2 times 9 is 18. 18 plus 5 is 23. So now I know that 9v minus 13 will equal that 23 length because those two pieces are congruent to one another. So I'm going to add 23 or add 13 to both sides. So I get 9v equals 36 divided by 9. I get v equals 4. Um, this one, I know that these two angles add up to 180. So I'm going to do 6 v, or 6g and 3g make 9g. Negative 14 plus 5 is negative 9. That equals 180 because those two add to 180. So I get 9g equals 189. Divide by 9, so 189 divided by 9, and I get g equals 21. Now that I know g is 21, I can plug it in here, and I can, do, or actually I'm going to plug it in down here because these two are equal. I could plug it in here and set these two added equal to 180. Um, so 3 times 21, and then I'm going to add 5 to that, so I get 68. So 9h minus 4 is equal to 68. So 9h is actually equal to 72. Divide by 9 and I get h equals 8. Um, number 6, these two pieces are congruent to one another. So I'm going to do 4s minus 3 is equal to 7s minus 24. Subtract 4s and I get 3s. Add 24 and I get 21. So divide by 3 and I get s equals 7. Um, and then these two pieces are congruent to one another. So 9r minus 17 is equal to 3r plus 13. I'm going to subtract 3r from both sides, so I get 6r. I'm going to add 17 to both sides, and I get 30. Divide by 6, divide by 6, so I get r equals 5. Okay, hopefully those made sense. Okay, so the next two problems are word problems. Um, always, always, always draw a picture whenever you're doing word problems. So it says in parallelogram W, X, Y, Z. W is 50 degrees more than X. Okay, so that means W is my bigger angle. So I'm going to put W here. Since I put W here on the bigger angle, it has to go around in a circle. How they name it goes around in a circle. So it goes W, then X has to be there, then Y, then Z. Okay, it says W is 50 more than X. So if I just put an X at where angle X is, this has to be 50 more than that one. That means that this is x, and that means that this is 50 more than x. Find the measure of each, uh, each interior angle. Okay, so to do that, I know that these two add to 180. So I'm going to do 50 plus x plus x equals 180. So that gives me 2x. So I'm going to do 50 plus 2x equals 180. I'm going to subtract 50, so I get 2x equals 130. Divide by 2, divide by 2, and that gives me 65 for x. So if x equals 65, that means that this angle is 65 plus 50. So 65 plus 50, which is 115. So this is 115, this is 65, and those two do add to 180. Um, next one, in parallelogram E, F, G, H. So I'm going to draw a parallelogram. Again, I don't know if I'm going to draw it to scale or not. This may not be necessarily what it looks like, but that's okay. At least I have a picture. Um, G is 25 degrees less than H. So it's 25 degrees smaller. So G is going to be my smaller angle. So I'm going to put a G right here. I'm going to go around in a circle. So it goes G, then H, and then it goes back to the beginning, E and F. Okay? G is 25 less than H. So I'm going to put X on H. I'm going to do x minus 25 for that angle. So again, those two angles together add up to 180. So an x plus an x is 2x minus 25 equals 180. So I'm going to add 25 to both sides, so I get 2x's equals 205. So 205 divided by 2 is 102.5. So x equals 102.5. And then, so that's angle h. 
that would be that angle right there. To find this angle, I would do 102.5 minus that 25. So this angle is 77.5. So this would also be 77.5, and this would also be 102.5. Okay, almost there, guys. I want for you to pause me and go ahead and solve for all these angles. Unpause me when you're done. It says find the indicated, indicated measure of parallelogram A, B, C, D. A to E to B. Okay, so what I'm going to actually do is I'm going to cover this up, and I'm going to go through and I'm going to label everything I can to start with. I know these two are vertical angles, so that has to be 117 also. I know that this guy plus this guy make a straight line, so that has to be 180. So what I'm going to do to find its supplementary angle, I'm going to do 180 minus 117. And I get that this is 63. That means this is 63. Um, this is a triangle. There's 180 degrees in a triangle, so I'm going to do 180 minus 80 minus 63. That gives me 37 here. Again, this is a triangle, so 180 minus 117 minus 23 to give me 40 degrees here. Um, this is 120, so this whole angle down here would have to be 120. That would make this entire angle 60, because those two added together are 180. So if that's 60, and I know 37 of that, I'm going to do 60 minus 37. To give me 23 degrees. Um, again, same thing here. This is 120. This would have to be 60, because those two added together would equal 180. So 60 minus 23 gives me 37. What do you guys notice? You guys notice that 37 is here and here, and 23 is here and here? The reason being is this guy, by definition, is parallel to this guy in a parallelogram, right? So if this is a transversal, right, on the parallelogram, alternate interior angles are congruent. So those are alternate interior angles. These are alternate interior angles. So remember alternate interior angles from, I think it was unit three or four. So we can do that down here also. I can add these up and subtract from 180 because that's a triangle and same thing here. But if I notice that this is parallel to this, this is my transversal, alternate interior angles are congruent. That makes that 40 degrees and that makes that 80 degrees. Now I have all the angle measures so I can start solving this. A to E to B, that'd be 117. B to A to E, that'd be this angle in here. So that is 40 degrees. A to E to D would be this angle in here, so that is 63 degrees. E to C to B, so this angle right here, 80 degrees. B to A to D, that would be that big angle, so 120. D to C to E, this little angle in here, so 40 degrees. A to D to C, that whole angle down there, which we said was 60 degrees. And D to C to B, this whole angle there, which we said was 120. So that is all of the notes for 8.2. Hopefully that made some sense. Um, you have two assignments. There is a Schoology assignment for you to complete. And then you also need to complete 8.2 in your supplemental packet, which is pages 3 and page 4. All right, thanks, guys.